I welcome you this evening to our Christmas Eve communion service. If this is the, the first time we've met, then I'll just say that my name's Rob Cotton, and uh, you're all very welcome here. Uh, just a couple of notices, just to make sure everyone's clear on what is happening. Uh, so we're not having a midnight communion. This is the communion we're having. Tomorrow morning, we're having a celebration at 10.30. So that hopefully is more appropriate for you to bring children, grandchildren, or uh, anyone you'd like to drag along. Uh, so do come in your Christmas jumpers tomorrow, and if you'd like to bring a present, we can't come to the front, but we can perhaps uh, stand where we are and reveal one of our presents. Uh, when I say reveal, as long as that's decent. Um, so we'll share our presents. The offering from this evening and tomorrow is for uh, Forget Me Not, the children's hospice. So if you'd like to contribute towards that in the envelopes that are provided at the end, then that's what our offering tonight and tomorrow morning is going to. So we're going to begin our worship as our stewards light our next Advent candle. Christmas is coming, the church is glad to sing, and let the Advent candles brightly burn in a ring. The fourth is for the Virgin, who mothered God's own Son, and sang how God's justice was meant for everyone. Amen. Well, I trust that you all, uh, if you were able to come to the drive-in carols last Sunday, that you enjoyed singing your carols last Sunday. Uh, that's my way of saying that you can't actually sing them in church. My apologies, but that's uh, the law. So uh, we'll be disciplined and abide by that. But we're going to sit and listen and reflect in a moment to our first carol, Christmas. Uh, it was on a starry night. Great and wonderful are the things the Lord our God has done for us. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Let's sit and reflect upon it was on a starry night.
little bubble. Let's speak to God in prayer. In the silence and stillness, let us open our hearts and lives to God, that we may be prepared for his coming as light and word, as bread and wine. A moment of quiet. We say together, loving God, you have searched us and known us, our blindness, our frailties, our fears and our selfishness. In sorrow, we confess that we have sinned against you and disobeyed your command to love. Forgive us for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who became like us, that we might become like him. Amen. The true light that gives light to everyone has come into the world. To all who receive him, he gives power to become children of God. This is Christ's gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God ever-living God, whose glory was revealed in the Word made flesh. May we who have seen such splendour in the coming of your Son be true witnesses to your self-giving love in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together the song of the incarnation. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Light has dawned upon us, dwellers in a land as dark as death. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. God is love, and his love was disclosed to us in this, that he sent his only Son into the world to bring us life. We know how generous our Lord Jesus Christ has been. He was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, so that through his poverty we might become rich. God has spoken in the Son, whom he has made heir to the whole universe, the Word became flesh and came to dwell among us. We saw his glory, such glory as befits the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Amen. We're going to have our Gospel lesson read for us from Luke's Gospel and chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Thank you. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 1. In those days... A decree was issued by the Emperor Augustus for a census to be taken throughout the Roman world. This was the first registration of its kind. It took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone made his way to their own town to be registered. Joseph went up to Judea from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to register in the city of David called Bethlehem because he was of the house of David by descent. And with him went Mary, his betrothed, who was expecting her child. 
While they were there, the time came for her to have her baby, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Now in this same district, there were shepherds in the fields, keeping watch through the night over the flock. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news, news of great joy for the whole nation. Today there has been born to you in the city of David a deliverer, the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. All at once there was with the angel a great company of the heavenly host singing praise to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. After the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Come, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw the child, they related what had been told them about him, and all who heard were astonished at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured, treasured up all these things and pondered over them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising, praising God for what they had heard and seen. It had all happened as they had been told. Amen. One of the features of our Trinity driving carols was that we were able to get people participating who wouldn't normally come to Sandal Methodist to share in our worship. Uh, we don't normally have Cliff Richard come and bring us a greeting or a Poirot do a reading or we don't have Kate Rusby singing a song for us. So I thought this evening we'd have a song from Kate Rusby, A Little Town of Bethlehem.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Could we all please stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with us all. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This evening uh, I thought I'd take you on a little pilgrimage to the Holy Land in your seats and in your minds. So come with me into the stable. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. Or so the carol goes. But come with me just for a moment in your imagination. Come with me, let me take you into the stable. Come with me into the stable, not the Christmassy sort of card tinselly scene, not the clinically sanitised and clean-cut nativity of some of your favourite carols. Come with me into the stable, where we can rediscover the reality of what we know of that scene from Scripture, God's inspired word. So, come with me. It's dark. 
It's a really dark night. We can hardly see to make our way down the dark passages behind the houses. And it's cold. Really cold. Imagine how cold it is. In some ways, you'd much rather be at home sitting in front of the fire, keeping warm. And yet, we're here for a special reason. We've come to see a new baby. So maybe we don't mind the darkness too much or the cold because we're sort of excited about the baby. So we don't allow the cold to penetrate as it might. We push the stable door. And actually it's not much warmer inside the stable. And it's just as dark. If anything, it, it's even darker inside pitch dark. We can see absolutely nothing at all. Not even our hand in front of our faces. So we walk carefully through the door. It all seems so quiet. And we make our way carefully wondering what the baby will be like. What's that? You've just trodden in something. What on earth is that stink? Who put that there? Donkey dirt. Well, I guess it might have been the donkey. But just wipe your feet, will you? Wipe your feet. Be careful. I don't remember any donkey dirt on our Christmas cards or even in the carols. I don't remember that smell. So we stand motionless in the hope that maybe our eyes will become accustomed to the dark and that soon we'll at least be able to make out some shadows. But the darkness is deep. We can see absolutely nothing. Anyway, do you still want to come with me into the stable? We're only at the entrance area yet, so if you want to meet the Christ child, come with me. Come with me into the stable. But listen, the silence is broken. I'll never manage this. I just can't manage it. There's a scream and there's a shout of pain, and then there's quiet. And then there's another scream, and then quiet. It's the birth pains of a young woman giving birth. And then we realize we've come too soon. The birth is not complete. We've come too soon. It's not yet Christmas. The crib is empty. The manger is empty. We've come too soon early. So we just stand without a word, stunned by the inappropriateness of us arriving before time. Then there's another shout and then quiet, a sort of rhythm of pain and then quiet. Should we sneak out as if we've never been here? Nobody will know. Let's just sneak out. And yet now we've come, we can't just prize ourselves away from what's happening. It's almost as if the pain holds us and grips our attention. We've become part of that rhythm of pain and silence and screaming. Surely the birth of the Son of God would be painless, pain-free. Or would it? Is this not real life? God becoming man, a helpless babe being born into the muck and the dirt of our world, the real world. As we try to see, is she squeezing Joseph's hand because of the pain? Is he smiling reassuringly and mopping her brow? We can't see, it wouldn't be appropriate for us to get too close. We've arrived 
too soon. The manger is still empty. But we can hear and we know the significance of what's happening. So we wait. It's expectantly that we wait. But you're coming with me into the stable. I'm never going through this again. I can't. I can't. And there's a scream. This time, louder. Bearing upon us. Forcing us to be part of the pain. How much longer must we wait in the darkness? How much longer must we share the agony of this young woman? How much longer before the coming of the baby? How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. Or so the carol says. But do you still believe the poetic license of the hymn writer now that you're actually in the stable? The little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Or so the carol says. The baby still has to come. How long have we been here? We cannot think how long. Time seems to have been almost suspended. This is no place to have a baby. Just feel how it is in here. The baby will be born into cold and darkness. And then there's no water. No water to wash the baby. Can it be true that there's nowhere else for this woman to go? With all the buildings that there are around the town, there must be a room somewhere for her. Someone must be willing to take her in. And the doors of the town always are so unwelcoming to a stranger. Are they always shut to the one who brings life? The screams seem to be getting more rapid. There's a, a breathlessness that takes away our breath too. And it's accelerated the rhythm of cries and calm. So then suddenly there's a cry to break into us, a scream to break the rhythm. And it haunts the darkness. And then a quietness, a deep quietness. The quiet of relief and exhaustion. So we wait silently, sharing the quiet, not daring to punctuate it with our own breathing. And then the sound that we've all been waiting for. Listen, a new voice cuts the darkness. The baby is crying. The baby is crying new life to us. The little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. Or so the carol says. But do you still believe the poetic license of that hymn writer now that you're in the stable? When have you ever known a baby to be born live without crying or a mother to give birth without pain? Only in carols written by a poet wanting everyone to feel all Christmassy. But now that you're here, in the stable, maybe we can begin to understand for ourselves, in our believing, in our living. We've been a bit like the Christmas carols. We've preferred to say that all is silent. We've wanted to be deaf to the realities which surround us. We've wanted a world where children's crying is never heard and women's screams are blotted out whether that be in Africa, Afghanistan, India, or wherever. We've wanted a world in which virtuous women are the ones who hold their peace and in which virtuous children are the ones whose voices never reach our ears. Good boys are seen and are not heard. Come with me into the stable. And now that we're in the stable, maybe we can begin to understand. 
Every Christmas we've come back, hymn book in our hands, eager to have our ears blocked once again under the magnetic glow of the candles. Every year we've come back to sing of the ideal woman, of the mother mild, and of her maiden bliss. Every year we've come back to hear how nobody at Bethlehem was willing to offer shelter to a pregnant woman going into labour and how she had to give birth in a cow shed. And every year we've come back to sing that this was surely a blessed morn and that Mary, the picture of virtue, the virgin pure, the lowly maiden, was nothing but contentment. The mother did nothing take in scorn we sing well that's what we sing in our carols and every year we return to the story where the meek woman accepts the will of the angel and it's been the same for the children every year we've come to sing of the perfect child the child who never cries who lays his sweet head down and who once in slumber reclining, is worthy of the worship of angels. Every year we've come to renew our picture of a child who is mild, obedient and good. The child who always is so silent that no ear may hear is coming. Come with me into the stable. The shadows are lifting in the stable, we understand something else. Always you, we used to think that God could be born into our world easily. We used to think that God's new life would come into our troubled world just by saying the word, just by offering our meek souls to receive him. We used to believe that faith demanded no effort. But maybe now we realize that we were wrong. Now we've actually stood in the stable. Now we know that the, there's no birth without pain, no new life without struggle, no joy without fatigue. Now we know that God cannot be born into our world of conflict and famine and grief unless there is some struggle. So we're in the stable. And maybe we begin to understand. God does not belong to some false word world which pretends that there is no pain. God does not belong to a tinsel stable with full sanitation and cosy romantic lighting. Or to some fairy tale land where people find life comfortable and where homelessness is sweet. God belongs to our world, our world of pain and darkness, which yearns for the joy and the new life, which only struggle and anguish and patience will actually bring. So maybe tonight we can understand. God is to be found not in the never, never Christmas card dreams, but deep in the relentless rhythm of screams and silence, of joy and pain. It's there that God draws time and eternity together. So you've come with me into the stable, and I hope I've not shattered too many of your favourite Christmas carols. I wonder why you were willing to come into the stable with me at all. Maybe you just wanted to feel all Christmassy, I expect it might have been something like that. Or was it because that Christmas story is a beautiful story? And maybe tonight you wanted to hear it again. And that's a good reason to come with me into the stable. Maybe you wanted to remember past Christmases and all the people who've been very dear to you. Perhaps you came with me into the stable because you wanted to remember. But perhaps also you came with me because you thought that God could only be found in some of a sort of 
comfortable fairy tale world. Perhaps it was because you thought that you could not find God in your world, in your darkness, or in your struggle. Perhaps it was because you thought you could not find God in your own world, in your own life. Well, it's a real story. A real story of pain and joy. It's a wonderful story. So come with me into the stable and you'll find Jesus there. And maybe you'll find him there, even tonight. Right here in this stable that we call Sandal Methodist Church. Amen. Let's speak to God in prayer. Unlooked for, Christ comes to shepherds washing their feet, sheep, through the long dark night. He comes with the glory of the angel's song and in the humility of the manger. Loving God, we pray for our local communities, the towns and villages around us, the city of Wakefield. In the midst of our everyday lives, surprise us with glimpses of the glorious, humble love at the heart of existence. Lord, come to your people and set us free. Searched for, Christ comes to the wise and powerful, star-led to Bethlehem, seeking a king. He comes, child of Mary, crowned with meekness, worthy of every gift. Loving God, we pray for the leaders of the world. We pray for our government, for Boris Johnson, for all in senior positions responding to the whole COVID pandemic. We ask that you might guide them with your light to the true wisdom of justice and peace, of freedom and respect for all human life. Lord, come to your people. Set us free. Longed for, Christ comes to Anna and Simeon, whose days are lived in faithful expectation. He comes a new life to the old, a living prophecy of hope. Loving God, we pray for the church in all the world. A different time in our history. We pray that you might unite us by your spirit and make us faithful witnesses to the hope that we have in you. Lord, come to your people. Set us free. Prayed for, Christ comes to men and women, girls and boys, crying out in darkness, pain and loneliness. He comes baptised at one with us, our Saviour, healer and friend. Loving God, we pray for those whose lives are hard and painful or whose existence is sorrowful, bitter or empty. We pray for all in need at this time, for those having to be socially isolated, those who feel lonely at this time. We pray for all who grieve, for all who find this time of year difficult. We pray for all in hospital at this time and for all who care for them. We pray at this time for Marilyn Evans and ask for your blessing upon her. Lord, we thank you for all who have reflected the light of Christ to us. Help us to follow their example 
and bring us with them to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand, if you're able, for the prayer of thanksgiving. So these are unusual circumstances, and um, I get to lead communion in a different way, and for the first time here. So I'm hoping the liturgy will be on the screen. Please join in the bold print. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our joy and delight, our reason for being, to offer you thanks and praise. All your actions show wisdom and love. Through your word, you spoke creation into existence and made us in your image and likeness. When we disobeyed you and drew away from you, you did not leave us in darkness, but sent your Son, the Word made flesh, to be the light of the world. Emptying himself of all but love, he was born of Mary, shared our human nature, and died on the cross. Yet you have raised him from death to eternal life, And through him you have sent your holy and life-giving spirit to make us your people, a people of light, to reflect your glory in all the earth. And so with angels and archangels and all the heavenly choir, we join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and redeeming God, we see your grace and truth in Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is born. The Saviour has come. God is with us. And so, Father, we remember and celebrate all that Christ has done for us. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Through him we give ourselves to you. May your Spirit draw us together in the one body of Christ, that we may have life in all its fullness, live in your love, and fill creation with a song of never-ending praise. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be given to you, almighty Father, throughout all ages. Amen. Christ is the bread of life. Christ is the light of the world.
Please be seated as we pray in the silence. In the Methodist Church, we have an open table, although you're not able to come to it tonight. Um, Basically, an open table means that the invitation is to all who love the Lord. So you don't have to be a church member to receive bread and wine in a Methodist church. It's an open table. This is the table of our Lord, not the table of the church. Christ is the true bread from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. So we draw near to him in faith. And the way that we do that is that we take one of our sachets, assuming if you've not got one, uh, if you put up your hand, then a steward will very quickly get one to you. So hopefully you've got one of these little sachets here. And... uh, We hopefully, there's no panic, there's no rush. We just pull back the top of that. And you'll find a wafer there. If you have a problem, then don't eat the wafer for a moment. If you have a problem, just put your hand up and we'll help you. Everyone okay? So what one here? So the stewards will help. I know they are a little fiddly, but this is the safest way we can do it for you. So once we've got the wafer, so we'll take the the body of Christ together. The body of Christ, which was given for us. Amen. And now we take the second part, the second foil open. So we snap it back and then peel it away. Again, if anyone has a problem, do put up your hand and we'll help you with it. Everyone okay? And if you can't work it, we'll give you another one. There's no panic. Normally we'd be waiting for people to come forward and then another group of people, then another group of people. So it's just time to prepare. So we take the the wine together. The blood of Christ shed for us. Amen.
So we turn now to our prayers and dismissal. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that we have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I remind you that our offering this evening is for Forget-Me-Not Children's Hospice. Our worship tomorrow will feel quite different. It will be at 10.30 and it's our celebration for Christmas Day. Come with your jumpers if you're able or presents uh, to show everyone. And there's no service on Sunday, but we will have a service on our YouTube channel. So we have prepared a service on YouTube. And if you've not yet seen the Vision Wakefield service, then I do commend that to you on the visionwakefield.co.uk website. Our closing hymn, our wonderful hymn, Silent Night. So
please leave the disposable uh, wine glasses. We are going to recycle all of those uh, afterwards. So please do leave those and we will recycle them for you. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill your lives with his light and joy and peace. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. And can I wish you all, those of you who are not here tomorrow, a very happy Christmas on behalf of Carol, myself, and all the stewards of our church. God bless.